iron three oxide plus carbon monoxide to iron and carbon dioxide. Iron has three valence electrons and oxygen has six. Iron three oxide has a full outer shell. Carbon has four valence electrons, oxygen again six. Carbon monoxide has one lone pair. This lone pair reacts with the oxygen in the iron three oxide and produces iron and carbon dioxide. Iron is a high density magnetic transition metal and the most abundant element on the earth owing to its presence in the earth's core. It is usually regarded as the fourth most abundant element in the earth's crust. Usable iron ores that are excavated from open pit mines can be chemically reduced from the oxide forms to yield metallic iron. Although iron is reasonably reactive, it is below carbon in the reactivity series, meaning iron can be reduced from its 2 plus or 3 plus oxidation states to the element by reacting it with carbon or carbon monoxide. A specialized brick lined furnace, called the blast furnace, is used to reduce iron ores to metallic iron, as the process requires extremely high temperatures of around 2300 degrees Celsius. According to Grant, Paul, and O'Neill in the publishings on quantitative elemental analysis of iron ore by laser induced breakdown spectroscopy, in addition to the iron ore, a number of other raw materials are located in the ore with the iron, which can be analyzed using laser-induced spectroscopy. There are also other materials that are needed in the production process. This includes coke. Coke is made from coal. First the coal is crushed, then sealed in an airtight oven in the absence of oxygen and baked for 12 to 16 hours. As Hammersley wrote in the charcoal iron industry and its fuel, fuel is as important as ore for the iron industry. Without coke, you can't melt the ore. The coke comes together with the iron in the blast furnace and limestone is added to remove impurities. A continuous blast of superheated air is then introduced to the furnace. It combusts the coal, which intensifies the heat, melting the iron. The fuel and pellets come together in the blast furnace, where we add just enough limestone to remove impurities. From below, a continuous blast of superheated air combusts the coke, intensifying the heat and changing raw materials into molten iron. The solid raw materials are added from the top of the furnace through the hopper, located right there, and once the furnace has been charged with the raw materials, hot oxygen enriched air at between 900 and 1300 degrees Celsius is blown into the furnace from the bottom through pressurized inlet pipes called tiers here and here. The heat from the injected air causes a series of reactions to take place, which result in the reduction of the iron ore eventually, and the temperature inside the furnace may reach an excess of 2300 degrees Celsius. Later on, this extracted iron can be used to create alloys. Carbon has four valence electrons and is the 15th most abundant element in the Earth's crust. Coke which is carbon fuel, is gray, hard, and porous. Oxygen gas is a diatomic molecule and makes up approximately 20% of the Earth's atmosphere. It is highly reactive in each atom containing six valence electrons. Oxygen is colorless, odorless, and tasteless gas. O2 has four valence electrons on each atom. When it reacts with carbon, it produces carbon dioxide and the oxygen fills its carbon's outer shell. Carbon steel accounts for 90% of steel production. It has great formability, durability, thermal conductivity, toughness, and ductility. Steel with a carbon content of 0.12 to 0.24% is used for structural engineering. Steel with less than 0.15% carbon is flexible enough to press into sheets and made into wire, but it is still relatively weak and steel with 0.5 to 1.5% carbon is used for casting a machine. From the blast furnace, the pig iron is sent to an oxygen converter. Scrap steel and pig iron are placed into the converter. Oxygen and powdered calcium oxide, lime, is then blown into the mix at high speeds through water-cooled pipes. The oxygen penetrates into the molten iron and oxidizes the impurities rapidly. Acidic oxides of carbon, sulfur, phosphorus and silicon are formed, which escape from the melt as gases or combine with lime to form slag. Slag forms a layer above the crude steel containing less than 1.5% carbon, remains behind as liquid steel is poured off. 
The oxidation of the impurities is an exothermic process, and the heat evolved as the impurities are oxidized keeps the contents of the furnace in a molten state. We begin the steel making process by dumping recycled steel scrap into the basic oxygen furnace and adding hot iron. Sparks steal the show. When high purity oxygen is blown into the mix at supersonic speeds and molten iron becomes molten steel. Metals contain a lattice of cations in a sea of electrons with an orderly arrangement of the atoms. As a result, metal layers are able to slide over each other when the stress is applied to it. The presence of carbon, whose atoms are much smaller than the metal cations, modifies the microstructure of the base metal by disrupting the regular repeating lattice. Carbon does this by fitting into the holes of the metal lattice. This now makes it difficult for one layer to slide over another. So as you can see here, the stress is being applied here, and this whole area here would shift over to the right. But, in this case, to make it easier to see, we put a larger element, but carbon is actually smaller. If you push over here, it will push into here, and this will help stop the stress just rolling everything over. We have a few plausible factors that would optimize these reactions. Increasing the blast furnace temperature being one of them. This would increase the particle motion, resulting in a greater chance that it will encounter another reactant. We could also increase the amount of coke and limestone added to the blast furnace, which would increase the amount of carbon monoxide that will react to reduce the iron oxide and create more pig iron. Along with this, if more air was to be pumped into the blast furnace, it would increase the pressure within the furnace, which would also create more pig iron. To sum it all up, we would make the iron oxide the limiting reagent, thus making all of it react. In this reaction, the optimizing process would be similar, where there is an increase in the furnace temperature, or the increase in oxygen pumped within the furnace. This would in turn speed up the reaction to produce steel. Although optimizing these reactions would be positive for the iron and steel making processes, it would have some negative effects on the environment. For example, lots of carbon dioxide is released in these processes. The steel industry is a major generator of carbon dioxide. More from the use of carbon as a reducing agent in the production of the iron from iron ore than from its uses as a source of energy to heat the air and oxygen. By 1990, through a variety of measures for blast furnace, coke rate reduction, waste heat recovery, and energy saving, carbon dioxide emissions by the iron and steel industry had been reduced to about 47% of the levels in 1960. Well, due to the fact that we don't have a blast furnace inside the house, we made this fire to resemble uh, the CO2 emissions that are coming out from a blast furnace. Now, I don't think the smoke really resembles what it should be like, so I'm just gonna put this here, and it's gonna fly away, but that's okay. Oh, oh. Ah, uh, the thick black smoke you can see from the plastic <laughs> <bowl>. <laughs> <laughs> it shows how bad the CO2 emissions from a blast furnace are. <laughs> so it's really bad for the in my <laughs> Steel works discharge large volumes of water to lakes, rivers, and streams, with additional volumes being vaporized while cooling steel and gas pipes. Paolo. <clears throat> Wastewater retained in holding ponds can seep through and may contaminate the local water table and underground streams. Temperature changes in natural water due to discharge of higher temperature process water, 70% of steel making process where water is used for cooling, may affect the ecosystems of these waters. Lovely! Oh, so, uh, quite some nice fish here, and uh, 
Who's this? Where were you? What do you mean? I was just here admiring the fish in the pond. What fish? What do you mean? Well, you know what? It's industries like yours who ruin everything. How did I ruin everything? Yeah, you come and you take your steel here, and then you just pour it in the water. So and you contaminate it with the discharged water. <laughs> uh, it's, just, it's just water going in water. What, what happened? What do you mean? You killed all the fishes. I don't see a single fish in this bowl. What do you mean? It's right there. You killed it. This isn't even a real pond. <laughs> Where did you get this fish? The revolution of the 18th wait, century wait, was... Wait, what revolution? It's iron and steel making. Oh god, Mike. Just, just quiet down and, and listen to what I have to say okay. first. Okay. okay. Okay, thank you. So where was I, I guess? The revolution of the 18th century was the result of the large-scale extraction of iron. Oh, bye. You, you good? Yeah, I understand. Done? Okay, can we continue? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. But the material revolution continues the development of new materials with structures and properties that serve the technologies of today. When the pig iron comes out of the furnace, it can be turned into a number of different alloys, which have a lot of different uses later on, such as iron can be used to make steel. That, that was my topic, steel. The blast furnace provides an easy to maintain extraction process for the iron ore. <clears throat> steel is much stronger, less brittle, and provides a better alternative to iron in many cases. Many, many, many cases. It's used in road construction, railways, appliances, buildings like reinforcing concrete, vehicles like cars, trains, trucks, even heavy equipment like bulldozers. Wait, are you done? Are you done? No, listen to what I have to say about this. Don't worry about it. Construction materials like bolts, nails, screws, household products, cooking utensils, cutlery, surgical instruments, guns, pipelines, ships, aerospace, furniture, tools, and jewelry such as watches. It is used for almost everything in our lives today and has changed how we live all together. So basically you're saying, without iron and steel... Mm, without steel and iron. Same thing, uh, okay, steel yeah, is better. But, but you know what, without iron and steel, we would be much less technologically advanced, thus less privileged. I have to agree with you there, but there is one thing you're missing out. What's that? If there wasn't any iron or steel, we wouldn't have to do this project. Mr. Time.